Well, let's check in now with Bruce Heron and the Heron Advisor Group for a look at your market report. Wall Street bounced back after tumbling to a six-month intraday low in last week's volatility. Sentiment got a lift from stronger than anticipated housing data and better than expected quarterly earning results. Now let's take a look and see how the benchmarks ended on the week. The Dow closed in positive territory up over 2.5% to settle at 16,805. The Nasdaq surged, gaining over 5%, closing at 4,484. And the S&P 500 increased just over 4% to end at 1,965. Some positive news for Social Security recipients. Monthly benefits for nearly 64 million Americans will increase 1.7% in 2015. Advocates for retirees say the government's measure of inflation doesn't accurately reflect price increases faced by older Americans due to the higher cost of housing and health care. Medicare beneficiaries will not see an increase for the cost of their Part B coverage. The maximum amount of earnings subject to the Social Security tax will increase in 2015 to $118,500. And while we're on the subject of Social Security, for the first time, most American adults are not married. Fewer marriages mean fewer kids and eventually fewer taxpayers. This may be a bad news for government-sponsored retirement programs and Social Security. Without reform, economists predict the new singles majority will threaten funding for future retiree benefits. The youngest baby boomers turn 67 in the year 2031 when they'll qualify for full Social Security benefits. Once a country's largest generational group starts cashing in on Social Security and Medicare, there won't be enough workers paying taxes to replenish the system. The trustee's annual report says the Social Security Trust Fund is due to be solvent in the year 2031. That's your market report for the week. I'm Bruce Heron. Have a great weekend. All right, thanks, Bruce.